All right. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Junaid and I'm a senior data analyst working for a financial services firm in central London. And in today's video, I'm going to go over how I got my first job in data analytics. I think actually it's an interesting story. So if you think it's interesting or useful, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Without any further ado, let's get straight into it. After university, I was applying to any and every job I could possibly get my hands on. I was applying to accounts assistant jobs. I was applying to actuarial analyst jobs. I was applying to data analyst jobs. I was applying to financial analyst jobs. I was applying to investment analyst jobs. Now, the investment analyst jobs, they were being taken up by people who had two, three, four years worth of relevant industry experience within finance. Even the entry level jobs were being taken by people who had more experience than I was. Initially, I'd started off applying for such high-flying investment analyst jobs at Bank of America, UBS, Goldman, JP Morgan, leading international firms and even boutique firms. I initially started off applying to those pretty quickly. I had to change my strategy because, like I said, a lot of those jobs were being taken by people who had much more relevant experience than I had. Those jobs are very, very difficult to get into straight out of university, especially if you only have one internship under your belt, it's very difficult to get into. So I had to change my strategy. That's when I started to apply for any and everything I could possibly get my hands on. Like I said, accounts assistant jobs, I was applying to financial analyst jobs, I was applying to data analyst jobs, I was applying to actuarial analyst jobs, even if I technically, some of those I didn't want to go into. I was just applying for jobs because I needed a job. I actually remember getting an offer for a job as an accounts assistant. It was for a, a clothing company which was kind of in the middle of nowhere and that sort of put me off. The team was very small, accounts assistant, the work was quite dull. The data that they worked with was also quite dull. I'd basically be looking at their financial reports and filing their financial reports and progression within that particular industry was fairly limited as well. I'd probably have started with the AAT the accounts technician certification, I believe, and then probably gone on to become a chartered accountant, which is something I never wanted to do. The audit industry, the accounting industry, I've always found to be quite dull. Again, it depends on the industry in person, but I personally found it to be quite dull. When I think about it, that job was severely underpaid as well, quite severely, for a graduate with, with a pretty damn good degree and experience at an investment bank, that job didn't pay as much as I think it should have. But I guess you're starting off as an accounts assistant, so you're not really expecting a graduate level salary. So that was understandable. That was the first ever job offer I got. I actually deliberated quite heavily on that because after a, a couple of months of searching and being rejected and searching and being rejected, there is a sort of tendency to latch on to whatever comes first, even if that's not right for you. Ultimately, I think I made the right decision. That job wasn't right for me. I wouldn't have been happy with the kind of work I'd be doing. It's quite manual. A lot of that now has been taken over by AI. The entry level accounting side of things has been taken over by AI. And I wouldn't have been happy in, in that job. I, I wouldn't have found it fulfilling. And exposure was limited. You're in a clothing company. You're doing accounts work for a clothing company, a, a niche clothing company that wasn't really a multinational brand or anything. And so my point being, I had the wherewithal to actually say, well, I've waited this many months. I can wait a couple more months for the right opportunity. There is also external pressure from, my parents are Asian, so obviously there's going to be pressure to get a job. I don't know, they seem to think that you should have got a job the day you graduated. The day I graduated, I should have started a job. <laughs> That was my first ever offer. Another interview I got was for an insurance company and I went in for, and I went in for an interview. I don't actually remember what the job title was. I believe it was insurance analyst, but it was on the pricing and actuarial side of things. So leveraging my, my degree, my experience within actuarial sciences and the exemptions that I had from my degree. And they came back to me saying, we think you're great. You'd be a great fit on the team, but we're going to refer you to a different department within the insurance company and we think you'd be a really great fit there. And the job they referred me to was business development broker. I guess I would have been calling prospective 
clients, cold calling them, cold emailing them and trying to get them to, to buy insurance. That's something I've never wanted to do unless it was for my own business. I hate that side of thing, cold calling and trying to onboard clients and the business development side of things. When I got referred to the other department and they came back with the contract, I actually remember I wasn't as um, adept at using English back then, but I remember emailing them back and saying, I think the other role is a great fit. This one really isn't where I see my career going. And that's really not my cup of tea. Like cold calling people, onboarding them, trying to get them to buy insurance policies. And, and the thing is, if you have a large insurance company, then you'll generally have larger clients who you can who you can do that work for. But this insurance company was quite boutique and niche. And so you'd essentially be doing market research and trying to poach customers from other insurance companies. And that's not something, never something I've been interested in. In fairness, I will say a bit of that I have had to do in, in my current role, where you would have to almost go and present to a client and onboard them and try to get them to not get them to. That's the difference, see? In the role I'm in, we have had to go to clients and explain to them, here, here's what we do, here's what we can do for you. But there's no, there's no like, there's no KPI that says, oh, you have to, you have to get four clients in every month. There's none of that sales side of thing. We might get a call from a prospective client who says, we need help with this, this, this. I'd love it if you can come in and give us a presentation just so we can feel out what value you could add. We go give the presentation. There's never been that pressure that, oh, we have to lock down this client so that we, we hit our, our target for the month. There's never been that pressure. I was actually a pretty decent salesman when I was, regard well, whatever I've been selling, I've been a pretty decent salesman. But that side of things where you're just selling constantly every single day, trying to persuade people, I, th I find that absolutely exhausting. And maybe for the future, if, if I do want to set up a business, I do have to work on that side of things. But for the moment, that's not something I'm interested in. Back to applications. So I'm applying to every single job possible. And I happen to apply to this junior data analyst role, which seems interesting. It's within financial services. You'll have exposure to a bunch of different clients. You'll have exposure to a pretty good suite of tools in SQL, Python, Excel, and Power BI was their data visualization tool of choice. And so my thinking is, hey, I'll take this. This seems pretty technically advanced and it fits pretty well with my previous experience in finance and mathematics. And so let's give it a shot. And I remember applying for that job September 21st, 2022. Two or three days later, I get a call from the recruiter saying that they've sent my CV to the organization and they'd love to have an interview. And so towards the end of that week, I had my first stage interview with the person who was going to be my line manager, the data analyst team lead and someone from HR. And the interview went, I don't think it went as well as I thought. I remember when I'd completed the interview, I don't think it had gone well. I didn't think it had gone well. I think I'd presented myself well, but when they asked me, when they asked me, um, because it was for a junior position, they asked me, what's your favorite Excel formula and why? And I think I remember saying, I'm paraphrasing, but I said VLOOKUP because you can pinpoint an exact number from an entire sheet of data. And looking back, that's probably one of the least technical answers I could have given. Apparently it worked because we were at a convention and during a coffee break, the HR person was in the line ahead of me who was in that interview when I got hired and we started talking. And they said, as soon as we finished the interview with you, we were like, yeah, that's the one, we're hiring him. So apparently that worked. Interviews are interesting because there are times when I've given an interview and I've thought it's the absolute best interview I've ever given. I hit all the technical points, hit all the, the soft skills, been a good fit for the team, asked fantastic questions of them at the end. Even in times when they said, oh, that's a really good question. We've never been asked that before. Wow, what a great question. This is gonna take me a second to answer. And then you don't get the job. And then there are interviews where I feel as though I paused too long, I thought too long before answering a question, or I've stuttered and rolled over my words. I mean, if you could see the bloopers 
for this video, you'd be, <laughs> you'd be surprised. And just in general, the interview hasn't gone well and they've responded with an offer. So interviews are interesting. Okay, going back to it. After that interview, I get a call from the HR manager saying, we'd love to have you on board. I'm going to be sending you the contract. This, these are the details, da 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 da. And you'll be starting on Monday the 17th of October. So that process moved fairly quickly. It was about just under a month between me applying and me getting the job. Nowadays, the market is a bit more tough. I'm just consistently applying in the background, just even for interview practice. And the market right now is really a buyer's market. Hiring managers and companies can really pick and choose who they want to hire. Interesting story. I got rejected from a job offer because I was too sporty. Their words, not mine. I was too sporty. Their team culture was doing coding marathons and coding challenges on weekends. And for lack of a better word, I'd accidentally mentioned I, I like sports. I play basketball, I play golf. Had they told me the team culture beforehand? Okay, maybe I'd say I play chess, which I do. And that sort of aligns with, with the mental gymnastics of coding and algorithms, but they hadn't mentioned that in the interview. And so when they asked me, what do you like to do on the weekends? What do you like to do in your spare time? I said, sports, basketball, golf. And that was the reason I didn't get hired. So it really is a buyer's market. Back then, I don't think that was the case. I think it was post COVID. A lot of, a lot of companies had been given grants and dividends from the government to really push for hiring. I was part of a hiring spree that the company made that I ultimately joined. I was actually part of a hiring spree. Now with all the tax rules and everything, it's, it's, it's really quite hard. And there you have it. That's how I got my first job in data analytics after a turbulent few months after university. That's all for this video. If this video was useful, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. If you want to book in time with me for a resume review, a portfolio review, or even just time to figure out how to get your first job, how to pivot into another job within data finance, I'll leave a link where you can book in time down in the description below. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Let me know down in the comments. I want to hear your stories about your first data analyst job or the jobs you applied to before you got your first data analyst job. Or even I want to hear your stories about you trying to get your first job. Any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I'll be sure to try my best to answer them. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.